Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a look at this. A 14S BMS with Bluetooth and serial interface. So let's get this opened. We have a couple of main components here. First of all, we have the USB cable in this end. This is to hook it into the computer. Let's put that aside. We have this black box here with this cable attached to it. This is the serial converter cable that you hook into your Bluetooth uh, cable to your computer. So, what this essentially does is that it disconverts the USB to a serial connection that you connect to that port on the BMS. So, let's take a look at this board or this box here. Like that. So this is what we have inside the box. It's a normal RS-232 chipset that converts the serial port to the USB port. Nothing spectacular at all. But one thing that I notice when I open this is that I have on this side here a couple of LEDs. Three to be precise. But on the lid that we have here, there is no holes whatsoever for those LEDs. So this is basically how simple this box here is. And you could potentially use any other serial port adapter that you have available. And now for the fun part, the actual BMS. So let's disconnect this contact here first. And what we have here is the actual Bluetooth chip. So this is actually just a serial port adapter to Bluetooth makes this possible for your computer to connect to the BMS board wirelessly. It's quite a neat little device. The last piece of the board is the actual BMS here. You have the multi-connector on this end that hooks up to your battery and you also have two black wires here that are two NTC resistors for measuring actual temperature and that's cool to have as well. Inside you have MOSFETs and you have the actual balancing board. And before we start, let's open this up to see how it looks inside. MCU or CPU there. And I'm guessing this is to control the MOSFETs and here you have the balancing circuitry. So let's see how the other side looks like. Here we have the transistors to control them. Some kind of MUX or something like that, I guess. I have now hooked up the BMS to a battery bank of 14 cells here. Be aware of that you can hook this up to less than 14 cells. It actually work. I have tested this. I tested this with adding two cells and just a secondary source of power to this uh, red cord here. So it's actually very seem to be doable to actually run this BMS with less than 14S. Though I have not had time to test that out yet. Currently I'm running it via the USB cable. Uh, I left this open here so I can see what's going on in terms of the communication. As I said before the LEDs are not visible outside and therefore you cannot see the RX and TX LEDs. Um, the funny part is that the voltage rail is actually connected both ways. So the BMS is supplying current or voltage to this controller. Meanwhile the USB is doing the same thing backwards. And that means it is a collision between them. With the software you get this paper note that I got here that says that you should go to lithiumbatterypcb.com So let's go to the web page and we have it here. You go to download center and smart BMS software download. You go down a little bit and you have the PC application software download here. You also have the connection diagram of each of the BMS systems that they deliver and if you want operation manual you have it here. So let's start it up. When you have downloaded the first time and you start it up, you will, if you are running Windows 10, you will be presented with this Windows Defender screen. You can obey it and go more info and run anyway. So you go to the COM port, 
You select the COM port that you're going to use, in my case COM7, and you press OK and you press Start. On the main screen you will see the main things of this BMS board. Be aware of that my BMS board seems to have an issue with cell number 1, I'm not really sure because it jumps a lot up and down. And the BMS number 1 also had some calibration issues. So basically here is the main screen and you see every settings that you have. You see the current, you see the main voltage, max and min and the medium. You can also see the FETs on the BMS that turn stuff on and off. Uh, it does measure a lot of different things and you can see the two temperature sensors here as well. Calibration is used for actually calibrating cells. So if you have a cell that is showing the wrong value, you input the new value here and you press the calibration button. Doing this will set the new value on that cell and that's really really neat to actually have. Settings. For being able to actually set a bunch of settings you need to first have pressed the read button. When you have done that you get all the settings in the screen here. The most important or most interesting ones that I would say is the balancing. It's currently set to 3.9 volt and a 50 millivolt difference. You have two different balancing modes. You have the normal balancing modes that will balance no matter what's going on. The other one is so called charge balance. That means that it doesn't go into balancing mode unless the actual battery pack is being charged. So you also have the over voltage protection and the soil under voltage protection. And of course you have the release values and the delay itself. Pack over voltage and pack under voltage is really nice as well and you have the charge and everything else. So basically this BMS board have a lot of functionality for not much money I would say. So let's test the balancing function. We go back to balance and we disable the charge balance. And we press right. So that's basically how you change settings. Press OK and we go back to the pack info. We can now see that the pack have started to actually balance. And it will balance all the top cells that are that have more than 50 millivolt difference to the minimum voltage cell. And this though will take time. Be aware of that this BMS board only have a 50 milliamp current balancing and that's not much to come with at all but it do work as long as the batteries are in balance from the start. For second hand batteries this may not be ideal and beware of that your battery banks need to be rather small for this to actually work in the long run. The good thing about this BMS board is that you can see the values so you will see that when you actually have an issue with the balancing. So let's go back to setting and disable the balancing because I don't want it to have it running right now. Right again. And you can set other things like capacity settings. Uh, you can measure the capacity based on the voltage. That's the current thing that is done on the main screen as you can see here. It's measuring 95%. So basically guys, this is how the application looks like in a very very brief overview. You have the other functions as well, but I have not I have not done anything on this page yet. I have just had a very very quick or brief overview of this BMS. And so far I think this it works. Though I'm a little bit interesting interested in why my cell number one is actually faulty in terms of measuring. Because you can see how much this jumps around. And that's way too much. It should not jump around over 100 millivolt. Now I have checked the cell and I have checked the connections and they are just fine. It's also a little bit interesting that the temperatures are this far apart. Because both those two sensors are tied together to each other right now. As you can see here. They are very very close to each other and still they are almost 2 Celsius apart. And yes, it is cold here. So now, as you can see, we have the full BMS here. I do have this Bluetooth thing as well. So we are going to take a quick look at how that looks also on the mobile phone. I have the mobile here now. So let's see if we can go to and download the software on the mobile. Smart BMS software download. Mobile application.
let's install it. Open the application. Let's see if we can connect this up. The Bluetooth is online. And there we have the BMS. And as you can see, everything in this application is on Chinese or something. It's I don't it's impossible to actually know what's going on here. Um, I can see some voltages and stuff, but nothing more than that. So basically the application for me is at least useless. If you guys know about a uh, different version of this application that actually are in English, let me know. Because I would love to install that one instead and see what's going on. But it seems like we have all the settings here. Uh, unfortunately, it's I, I can't read this, so I'm not sure. I can only read the numbers on the side, so that's useless for me. Another interesting thing here is how much power does this BMS actually use? Because that's important for smaller power packs. I have this set to 20 milliamp, and I'm currently drawing somewhere around 3 milliamp, and that's when the device is actually active and running against the computer. If I remove the computer, you can see that currently it draws somewhere above 4 milliamp and it bounces up to somewhere around 6 sometime. But what's interesting is what's happening now. As you can see here, it now bounces down to around half a milliamp. And the reason for that is because the BMS goes down in a sleep mode. As long as the BMS does not have to send any of the data, it goes into a cycle where it is in a sleeping mode. You can see that it flickers sometimes and that's when it wakes up and does its cycle to see whatever is going on. So let's hook it up to the computer again. And you will see that it immediately goes up to 3 milliamp. Let's take a look at this BMS then. Is it so that I think that this BMS is actually worth buying? That depends. If we are talking and comparing this BMS to the shiniest versions that you get for 5 or t even 10 dollars or even smaller than that, yes, it is. Because this BMS you can actually actively monitor the system. And more importantly, you can set the thresholds. And by setting the thresholds, you can actually make this BMS to disconnect stuff. But what if you compare this BMS to the Batrium version? Is it worth it then? It depends. Uh, I would say that the Batrium BMS is heck of a lot better BMS system. I mean, it's so far away, you can't even imagine. But the price tag, $600 compared to $50. That's quite a difference. So if we take it that way, this is a heck of a lot good BMS system, but still it depends on the functionality you want. If you just want something simple, this does the trick. For a small battery bank, let's say one kilowatt hour or two kilowatt hour, this one is fine. But if you're going big, then I would say that Batrium is a lot better. Enough about that. If you want to buy this BMS, Check the links below. There are several different versions, all from 30 amp and upwards. So what is my plan for this BMS? At the right here, you can see that I have this big 48 volt pack that I built quite a long time ago. If you haven't seen that already, please check out the video up here. This is the pack that I'm going to use this BMS for. I think that's rather good and it should suit very well. It's a 30 amp BMS, so it's good enough to actually protect this one. If it works out well, I will make an interconnection cable so I can connect several of those packs in parallel. And then I will have several of those as well. My end goal here is of course to hook this system up via the Bluetooth thing or 
the serial, I'm not sure yet, and then to my Raspberry Grafana project. Doing that, I will be able to actually monitor this system as well in 2Ds. If you guys want to see more of that stuff, leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope to do this in the soon future, but if any one of you guys already have software running for this BMS that could work, please let me know below and I will use that instead. There is no use of inventing the wheel once more. This was just a quick look at the BMS, so I have not done any proper tests to it, and that's something for another video. This video is already long enough. So once again guys, thanks for watching, and see you next time, bye!